Hello everybody, this is Barnage, and this is my review for Ice Climber on the Nintendo Entertainment System. So this is Ice Climber. It's a game where you scale mountains to collect vegetables. Anyway, you pick between one or two players, pick a mountain you want to climb, and then get started. You should probably start with the first mountain because this game is super hard to get the hang of and it just gets increasingly more difficult with each of its 32 levels. It can be played one player with just Popo or two players with Popo and Nana simultaneously. But I just played single player because I don't have anyone to be my Nana. <laughs> Playing with a friend is probably a lot more fun. That way you have someone to suffer with as you tackle the awkward controls and slippery environment. You remember the ice levels in Super Mario where you slip all over the place? Yeah, that's this game. Except you're climbing up a mountain, and if you fall back down, you're dead. Which makes it way more of a pain in the ass. Did I forget to mention that landing on the next platform requires near perfect execution? Most of the time you just clip through the corner to the next floor. It takes a ton of practice. By the end of the 32nd level, I was a master at it. Just kidding. I got a little better, but something that would just kill me over and over through the entire game. Mostly because your jump barely moves you anywhere horizontally. Don't even bother to try jumping over the smallest to gas because you're just not gonna make it. Dicks. On the way up, you run into little yetis called toppies that all have obsessive compulsive disorder, so they're constantly just fixing the floors. This place is a mess, you sloppy toppies. Get the floor fixed on the double. Anyways, these guys are a real pain when they're above you, covering your only path forward after you just worked so hard to make an opening. Damn it, you furry little asshole! At least they make it up to you when you're on the same floor because they fill all the holes in so you can't fall back down again. Another enemy is the nitpicker. Nothing to say much about this little birdie, just another pain in the ass on your way to ascension. The third and final enemy you won't run into very often. He's a big fat guy wearing a speedo and sunglasses. I think he's supposed to be a polar bear. Wait a minute. Dad, is that you? You're taking too long, he says you're a bad son because you suck at this game and slams on the ground, moving the screen up. I only saw it a couple times because the only time he comes out is when you've been stuck for a very long time on the same floor. If you're on the bottom when he moves the screen up, sure it kills you, but if you have any lives left, you're just gonna respawn on the next floor. Thanks, Dad. I knew you still love me, even if you're always saying that you don't. If you didn't have any lives when he moves the screen up, I mean, what better way to get unstuck than the sweet embrace of death? When you die, you respawn at the bottom of the current screen. Sometimes I would get respawned in the middle of the floor instead, but that was pretty rare. You're invincible until you move, so if you respawn inside an enemy, you better just not move, for you're gonna die immediately. What in the cheesy yeti fuck? It's also possible to respawn on a single block-wide pillar, which you can't even stand on, so you just die over and over until you run out of lives. Damn it, not this shit again! Ugh. Each level is eight floors, and once you reach the top, the level is over and the bonus round begins. Here you can collect those vegetables that you fought so hard to reach, but they only give you points, which don't really do anything, so it's not really necessary. The only way to get an extra life is by getting the Corn of Legend, but I never saw it, so good luck. I think you need to beat a certain number of levels without getting game over for that to happen. Thankfully you won't lose a life at this point, so you can just jump off the cliff and move on to the next level, because that's probably just what's gonna happen anyways. So go out on your own turns, am I right? Ha! <laughs> I definitely died on purpose there! If you do manage to make it to the top within 40 seconds, you can try to jump up and catch the condor at the top. Feels like a pixel perfect jump to catch this thing. Most of the time I swore that I was gonna catch it, and then nothing happened, and I just had to try again and again until I fell off the mountain and died or ran out of time. Feels super satisfying when you actually do catch one, though, because of how hard it is. I only wish it was less anticlimactic. Let me pile drive that asshole bird into the ground, at least, if you're gonna make it so damn hard to catch. It only gives you a point bonus, and as I mentioned before, points are worthless other than being a uh, how much do I suck number to compare with your friends if you have any that can bear to play this game. The game difficulty really ramps up once you start including a lot of blocks that pull you around like a conveyor belt and others that just can't be destroyed. At this point it's when I found out that you can move off from one side of the screen and you'll pop up on the other side just like Pac-Man. But even using that strategy, it still forces you into a lot of situations where you have to make really specific jumps that feel just impossible to pull off. 
But you don't have to worry about those levels until you're nearing the final few mountains. And if you make it that far, I salute your resolve or your masochistic nature or whatever drove you to play this game. So now we've reached the part of the video where I tell you my opinion of this game as a whole. It may come as a surprise to you, but I think this game is... terrible. I love the level and the character designs. I mean, they gave the vegetables frickin' eyeballs. How adorable is that? Also, the sound effects are pretty good, but the controls are just too clunky and frustrating to be a fun, playable game. I'm sure some people like it, but it was probably because they played it as a kid and they have some nostalgia driving their love for it. I really don't think anyone could pick this game up for the first time and enjoy it. If you're a Super Smash Bros. fan and you want to experience where your favorite hammer-wielding duo came from, as well as some of the items, level designs, and collectibles, I recommend you just save yourself the trouble and watch somebody else play it. If you like this game and didn't agree with my opinion, please feel free to let me know that I'm stupid and my opinion sucks in the comments below. Or if you agree with my opinion, put that in the comments so people know that I'm a god of accurate game reviews. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like so I know that it wasn't a total waste of time. And subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next disaster I come out with. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.